First one we're going to talk about, though, is Todd Gurley moving from the Rams over to the Atlanta Falcons. I thought this was a great move for the Falcons. They let Devontae Freeman walk in free agency. But, Alex, I'll put the ball in your court first. How are you feeling about this Gurley signing? Are there implications for the other pieces on that Falcons team? And, and you know, are there any losers or winners in this? Yeah, I, I... That's a good question. I don't really think there's necessarily any losers on this Falcons team. Um, if anything, I, th- I think it just makes their offense a little bit better. We saw when Devontae Freeman was there, you know, he was um, always fairly involved when he was healthy, and it didn't really necessarily take away from the volume of those wide receivers in Julio Jones or Calvin Ridley. Uh, Matt Ryan was always able to rely on the running back receiving the ball, and Todd Gurley, we know he's got receiving chops from his days. Um, in LA previous to you know this past season which was a little bit uh, challenging in the air for him but I think it's a great move for Atlanta it's a one-year six million dollar deal low risk they they get a guy who's proven to be an elite running back in the league and to me fantasy football wise I think Todd Gurley himself is still a low-end running back one Um, last year in half PPR he was the running back 12 and a lot of people talk about his 2019 season almost like he was a bust I do think the touchdowns will regress in Atlanta. He had 12 touchdowns last year in L.A. I don't really expect him to get 12 again. But but one thing to note, in Atlanta, they're not really going to be preserve, preserving him like um, the Rams were. The Rams had him on this you know pitch count. They, they acted like they wanted to kind of preserve that knee and save him for the, the end of the season and the playoffs. This is a one-year deal. So Atlanta's going to let him go as hard as he can go. Um, And I think his carry count could go up from last season. He had 15 carries a game in 2019. The previous three seasons in L.A. was 18 carries a game. So maybe he gets a little bump on the ground. And then through the air, I think he gets a big bump. Um, He only had three targets a game last season. When he had that dominant 2018 in L.A., he actually had six targets a game. Um, And then Devontae Freeman last year had five targets a game. So I think he gets another target or two per game in half PPR and PPR formats. That's a huge boost. I think he's going to be a little bit more effective um, in Atlanta. The L.A. Rams line really struggled last season. So, you know, I'm willing to take a chance on his upside, probably in the back of round two, early round three in drafts. Uh, But I think it's a great move for the Falcons, a great landing spot for Todd Gurley, and I think it's going to give him the opportunity to be a workhorse like he's always been. Yeah, I'm with you 100%. I'm a firm believer that Gurley has a ton more left in the tank. Finishes the RB14 in PPR. I know you mentioned the half-point PPR, so there's still value there. I think his receiving work is going to go up. Um, he only missed one game last year. A lot of people think of Gurley as missing all this time or you know dealing with all this injury off and on. I mean, he only had 33 fewer carries than a pretty decent 2018 season. If we even want to go back to 2017, he only had 56 fewer carries, which if you think about that, that's that's three games for a running back, essentially. Um, look at the workload that the Rams were even giving Gurley towards the end of the season. We had him uh, getting... Uh, He averaged from week 11 on 16 fantasy points per game. And in those games, he had 25 rushing attempts, uh, six, but that was in a game where they were getting smacked by the Ravens on Monday Night Football. 19 attempts, 23, 11. That was the game where they got exposed by Dallas on the road. Gurley still had 20 fantasy points in that game thanks to two touchdowns. And then 15 carries and 20 carries. So he ended the season on a really nice stretch, getting a full workload and played pretty well. You know, I'm, I'm willing to bank on that. I think he's going to take over some of the vacated targets left by Devontae Freeman. Even if you look back to 2016 to 2018 with Tevin Coleman on the Falcons, he was getting about 30 receptions a year uh, to Freeman's you know, 50 or so. So, yeah, absolutely. I, I think Gurley's going to get an uptick with that receiving work. We're going to keep an eye on reports coming into the season. Look how he's, he's looking at camp. If he, you know, All reports point to that knee is looking healthy. Gurley's back. I think it's huge. Um, absolutely, he could have high-end RB1 upside. And I think the offense as a whole for the Falcons is going to improve a little bit just because Gurley is an upgrade over Devontae Freeman to me. Absolutely. Uh, anything else to add on, on this move? Yeah, one last thing, and it's something – You know, maybe it's just a narrative and it's it doesn't really hold any weight. But when you think about this Atlanta Falcons um, team as a whole, you've got to think that their window is closing with that core of Matt Ryan and Julio Jones. Uh, They're you know, they're not getting any younger. 
And you've got to think if you're the Atlanta Falcons organization, you're thinking, hey, how can we go make another Super Bowl run while we've got these core pieces in place? Because like we've talked about on this podcast in the past, it's super hard to keep the status quo year over year in the NFL. Like we saw the Falcons blow the Super Bowl and then they've struggled since then, but they pretty much have the same um, offense, at least the defensive side of the ball. I know they've had injuries and things, but you've got to think with this one year deal with with this really strong core with Matt Ryan and Julio Jones and a young Calvin Ridley, guys that, you know, have shown to be um, superstars in the past or at least have superstar potential. Um, you've got to think with Todd Gurley on a one year deal, they are going to give him the work and they are going to put the pedal to the metal. So I think his volume increases, especially like we said in the passing game, and he could be a great value in drafts if people are sleeping on him in that knee. Seems like in summary here, what we're saying is the scoring volume is going to go down, uh, but that's going to get balanced out with an increase in usage, more receiving volume. So, you know, for us, sounds like uh, Gurley gets the double move sports stamp of approval. 